All right, so in our previous video where we installed the Cisco Umbrella roaming client, we saw that it was still protected with the virtual appliance. And that's because the machine we was actually connected to was the uh, an on-prem or on-premises device. Now the roaming client is, if you've not already guessed, perfect for instances where you have potentially remote workers and they are going to be off the network so not on premises but still need to be protected with this cisco umbrella and you still need a way to be able to block certain requests uh, dns requests from being able to um, be reachable and protect those remote devices from potential threats while off the network so what i've actually done in this lab walkthrough is i've actually got a machine here that's not on the network or not on our uh, lab environment or on-prem environment connected to that and we have the umbrella roaming client installed and uh, and running so we're just going to have a look at the difference here between what we can see uh, for devices that are not connected to the network so we can see in this particular example that we have uh, our ipv4 address as normal configured we can see that we don't have any ipv6 or ip layer enforcement configured we'll cover that in an upcoming lab walkthrough and we can also see uh, the information related to our organization so let's head over to umbrella before we do any sort of searches or request anything from a internet perspective to a website and we'll see what we can see under the roaming client so with access to our umbrella dashboard, let's just go to deployment and let's go to roaming computers. And we can see here that we've actually got this second machine now, Windows 10 test machine or MACH. And if we expand, expand that, we can see that we are protected. We can see, again, the same information we get really from uh, what you would expect in the uh, roaming client and we can also see that we've got the default policy applied here for this particular um, machine and this machine as i say is off the network it's not connected on the network so if we were to go across to our reporting and then if we go to activity search and then if we were go to go to uh, roaming computers, filter on roaming computers, we don't have any information yet. So let's head back over to our remote client and let's uh, do some searches across the internet and see what information we can get back here. So I'll just open up a web browser here. And with that web browser open, let's just click on Facebook, for instance. Let's go to Facebook. And while that's loading, we just want to generate some traffic. What we'll do as well is we'll see whether we're actually or confirm that we're protected with Umbrella. So to do that, let's go to welcome dot opendns dot com. We can see there that we are protected. And if we, again, if we go to Internet Bad Guys, this should actually block. There we go. So we can actually see that even though we're not on the network, we can actually confirm that Cisco Umbrella is indeed working and is protecting our remote workers in this instance. So let's just head over now to our policies and we'll create a policy for the roaming devices or remote devices. So if we go to DNS policies, we've got the default policy and the bypass policy. What we'll do is we'll add another policy uh, on top of this here. And let's just go with the defaults there and we'll specify our roaming computers. And as you can see, we've got two here. So we can specify them individually or we can just select roaming computers like that so we'll just do that 
and what we can do here within security settings we can keep the default security settings so we'll just leave those on for the purpose of this uh, lab walkthrough and then the same with that uh, as well we'll leave the default set all the way through here And then what we can see is we've got log all requests that are on, so we'll leave that on as well. So we'll just save that policy now, and that policy will now apply to our um, roaming devices. And what I'll do actually is I'll rename the policy actually to uh, let's name it to remote workers. Let's call it. Okay, so that policy is now saved and we should be able to now, uh, once applied, actually go to our reporting and if we go to activity search, we should be able to actually search for the roaming computers once this takes, uh, takes effect. So if we go to roaming computers, we can now see that we get information coming through here. And what we can see is we can actually see the external IP address for our uh, device that's roaming here, this Windows 10 device. We can see the um, identity of the device and we can also see the internal IP address that's being used even though it's um, currently uh, a, a classed as a remote machine. So if we click into these, obviously we get the same information that we get and we can also control that information there as well. So really good for being able to protect remote workers when they're not in the control of your DNS services on premise. We can still use Cisco Umbrella to protect remote workers by using the roaming client. There is other ways as well that we can also do this. And uh, the, the other way that we um, saw previously and we'll take a look at in more detail in upcoming lab walkthroughs is the use of AnyConnect or more recently the secure client to um, do this as opposed to using the umbrella roaming client. But that's it for now. I'll see you in the next one.